Hey guys, welcome to another episode with me, Shashank Udupa. And in today's episode, we're going to do something slightly different. And this is basically a book review. Okay, we're going to review a beautiful financial book, and it's called the Zurich Axioms. Now, let me talk a little bit about the book and about the author before getting into the entire, um, you know, things inside this book as well. So the first thing is that the book, the Zurich Axioms, is basically a book which talks about managing risk and reward. Now, the author of this, Max Gunther, had actually written this book, and this Zurich Axiom is basically twelve different axioms or statements or principles that one must know about the risk and reward when investing in the stock market. Now, these axioms are distilled by the experience of the author's father, and his father used to work in a Swiss bank in New York. and this is from his father's experience and his own experience that he talks about uh, in this book and there are 12 rules or 12 statements that he follows and he says you you guys should also understand these 12 rules when you're investing in the stock market and it's very very uh, i would call it it's amazing to see these rules because it's slightly unconventional that you would might think that okay this is a straightforward rule but he's written from his experience some slightly different rules and it's good to see what it is Now if you look at the author from 1927 to 1998 was an Anglo-American journalist and a writer as well he's written almost 26 books including his investment best seller which was the Zurich Axioms Now he was born in England but Gunther moved to United States at the age of 11 after his father who was the manager of of a Swiss bank in New York and it was called the Swiss Bank Corporation in later on in 1998 the bank actually merged with uh, Union Bank of Switzerland UBS to form the second largest wealth management firm and then after all that he wrote this entire book called the zurich axioms largely based on his father's trading advice so before we get into the 12 different rules or 12 different statements i want to say that all these rules that you will see right now are from the book it is not my own rules it is not our team's rule it is the rules that from the book and it's quite interesting it's on risk and returns so i want you guys to have an open mind just understand and understand the logic behind these rules and let's see what the different rules are Okay so let's look at the axiom number 1 which is on risk now you know that most of us love a risk free portfolio we want you know obviously we want to maximize gains but we want the lowest risk possible so we want to become rich but take the least amount of risk also at the same point because you know a risk free portfolio offers me stability and security so i'm quite you know peace of mind is there but the axioms okay the axiom that which is in the book which actually proposes the reverse what it says is you know what if you really want to become rich then you have to take more risk you cannot have a risk free portfolio and expect to become extremely rich or have this amazing wonderful life but the only thing is with this risk okay comes a lot of tension or you know a lot of stress okay now you might want to you might be worrying a lot a life avoiding worry is either boring or you'll just end up being poor is what the book says the basically what the book says is you need to live an adventurous life and all the rich people if you look at them they've all become rich because they've taken certain risks in life and what this book basically says is take the risk you must learn how to live with risk you must learn not to worry and worry is just a normal thing but you should not worry about risk and invest in such a way where risk is a continued thing for you to grow now it also says you need to play for meaningful stakes what does this mean this basically means that if you have a brilliant idea then you should go big or go home you know you've heard this saying go big or go home so if you have a brilliant idea then he says that you need to invest a lot of money in that um for example if you found this perfect you know stock or this brilliant stock that you feel is amazing then he's saying instead of just investing a small amount if you want to become uh, rich or this is one of the rules of the axioms then invest a lot of money into that another a very important thing that he talks about in this axiom on on the risk axiom is that he's saying resist diversification and we have heard a lot of people talking about this that don't over diversify if you get too diversify you won't be able to invest a lot of money in that meaningful stake in that brilliant idea that you've got diversification definitely reduces the risk if it reduces the risk it reduces significant reward that you can get and if you reduce the significant reward that you can get then you won't make a lot of money is what they say so three things on the risk axiom one be okay with risk take it i know you have to worry a little bit about risk but it's okay take the risk if you you know obviously you have to take risk to get higher rewards so do take that risk second if you find something that is meaningful and if you feel that is it is good slightly go big on it okay invest more money into it and third don't over diversify just do little diversification that should be good enough the second axiom okay which is i think a lot of people can relate to this the second axiom is on greed come on i mean we all relate to this it's on greed the book says basically that if you reduce your greed 
okay if you lalach if you reduce your greed you increase your chances of making money and this is i would say from personal experience also this is fairly right because sometimes you are up by 10 15% or 20% and you're seeing that you have made money but you have this small itch you have this small greed saying that you know what abhi 20% upar hai let me just wait for another 10% uske baad i'll definitely exit some money and this is what you know sometimes suddenly reversal might happen and the stock might go down right so what the book is saying is that start reducing your greed don't be so greedy about money have a system in place it's very important to have system in place don't let this emotion of greed come into your stock trading life so stay away from greed as soon as you get a good profit book your profit and get out of there don't wait for that next extra 10 15% now how he describes this is like think about this okay i keep telling you keep an open mind think about this he's like you might be lucky once you might be lucky twice you might be lucky three times but don't push your luck also right lucky streak is something that is good you should if you are in a lucky streak take that lucky streak and get out right if you are making money one time two times if you win three times if you win four times don't think you are awesome okay think you are lucky at that point you're using good logic good skill but get out at the right time and the same thing happens reverse if you're losing constantly or if you're losing money don't try to recover that money too much and i've seen a lot of people you know intraday trading do this mistake where they lose a lot of money and they want to recover the entire day and then that pursuit of recovering that money that they've lost in the early days uh, early trading time they lose more money at that time so any streak whether it's good streak or bad streak is short lived it can turn any given point of time so if you're on a lucky streak don't think you'll always be lucky it will definitely turn around so book your profits and get out immediately how do you decide how to do this how do you decide to beat greed and there is a very simple way to beat greed you have to have a system and that system is when i'm trading in something what is my desired profit and if i get that profit number i am out and stick to that So if I invest in something and I say if I get more than eight percent or ten fifteen percent in this stock, then I will book at least fifty percent of my profits, or I will take out maybe eighty percent of my profits and keep the remaining part inside. So that is what most people do. But a lot of people, what they do is they just invest. Okay, it'll go up twenty percent. They'll be like, "Abi thirty percent jayega. Let's wait, and it'll crash or it'll fall down, and you lose money, and you're very sad, and you lost that opportunity of selling." So always have a system in place, and that is the best way to beat greed. Okay we'll come to the third axiom and this axiom is called hope okay so there's this line in the book that says when the ship starts to sink don't pray just jump you get the point if a ship is sinking don't sit in that ship and start praying for something to happen jump and survive so in the stock market when you're investing expect things to go wrong expect your investment ideas to be bad expect the market suddenly might turn and become a very bad market for you expect you to make a lot of losses but then do not pray or do not think that your ability to invest is gone and you know don't lose that confidence that you have don't hope on something that is not there when it does happen when something goes wrong like that don't sit and pray saying to some divine intervention that please make the stock move upwards okay that does not work in the stock market it's not how stock market works so when that does happen and you've had a loss and you're having a bad day don't pray just cut your losses jump out of it and let it go the thing is you need to be willing enough to tell yourself that okay something went wrong today let me analyze what went wrong but today it was a loss and i will accept this loss now a lot of people cannot accept loss a lot of people cannot accept loss good traders accept loss a lot of other people in the stock market even if they're investing they cannot accept loss now the book recognizes these following challenges which is basically loss is very painful okay obviously it is very painful nobody likes loss and second thing which i've seen a lot in the industry is that very few people can admit that they were wrong very few people can admit they were wrong and loss is also painful both these things you should throw away the next axiom axiom 4 is on forecasting and what is forecasting it's like future future predictions now look at this line human behavior cannot be predicted distrust or don't trust anyone who claims to know the future however dimly and we know this because in the stock market we have seen a lot of people trying to or claiming to predict the future of the stock market first of all understand this golden thing in the stock market nobody can predict the stock market just like how nobody can predict the future nobody can predict the stock market also if someone could predict the stock market he wouldn't be there he would be making a lot of money now but why do we still listen right why do humans still want to know that they can predict the stock market tomorrow or have this feeling that you know i can connect some dots or i can connect the pattern and actually predict the stock market and this is a human thing why do we listen because 
the easiest and quickest way to get rich in the stock market is to know what the market is doing tomorrow if i can predict the market is to what what's going to happen tomorrow is the quickest and fastest way for me to get rich if i know what's going to happen tomorrow but that's not what happens usually and humans over history over time always have this urge to know what is going to happen tomorrow or what is the future going to look like now why are these forecasters or these future prediction guys dangerous the reason being sometimes they might be right i'm not saying they're wrong i'm saying sometimes they might be right but when these guys go right if one guy predicts the future is right once and then he is right again he's right again three times he's right then everyone believes that he has found the perfect formula to predict the future and he is amazing then he might go wrong once he might go wrong twice but no one will care about the wrong because they will start looking at the right because he did he was right two three times so if you look at it from that perspective whenever there's a person who's forecasting the future often people tend to look at his good side and tend to forget the times when he's been wrong multiple times that's what this book says now there are some events that can be predicted in the future right for example sunrise sunset when is the next full moon all this can be predicted but markets deal with so many variables okay which are human related variables human behavior market related variables market behavior a uh, global market scenario macroeconomics microeconomics that is unbelievable how many variables enter the stock market on a daily basis some earthquake happens somewhere it might affect the stock market in some other country because some commodity was destroyed in that earthquake it, it is just magnificent with the number of variables that are in play so trying to predict something like that it is next to impossible so do not do that it is unpredictable you cannot predict the next day on the stock market understand that and learn that and whoever is trying to predict don't listen to them that's what this book says so the next axiom is called patterns axiom 5 is called patterns now this is the line chaos is not dangerous until it begins to look orderly okay what does this mean that we know that chaos is there okay everywhere chaos something or the other keeps happening and we think chaos is random but chaos is it it is random it is okay for us but imagine if there is an order in chaos and that is when it starts becoming dangerous if we know and predict when the next chaos is going to happen now everyone wants a formula to be rich so we all try to look for patterns everyone thinks there is this way where there is a pattern where if you do this 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 you will make a lot of money and a lot of people try to make formulas and these formulas actually don't exist but what this book says and what this axiom basically says is luck plays a bigger role in the investment than your uh, than you might actually imagine on your outcomes luck plays a very big role apart from formulas he's like formulas don't exist sometimes luck plays a big role now it is true that history repeats itself a long over a period of time but sometimes history does not repeat itself and a lot of people think history repeats itself so the pattern will emerge and you know i can start investing in the same way but that sometimes it's not the case where there is no pattern but what we might do okay as individuals as humans we might look at patterns we might link two cause and one effect so something might happen and we'll be like oh this is the cause this is the effect so because of this and because of this the stock market has moved today again we don't know why the stock market has gone up or gone down on a particular day but we link and this is something that we have seen a lot with newspaper with medias the media industry usually puts all these headlines saying the sensex or the stock market fell today by xyz percentage why because something like this happened it is a it is trying to connect parallels and dots but there might be so many other variables for it now the next axiom is called mobility now this is very important please listen to this the main important thing here is avoid latching on to a familiar now what does avoid latching on to a familiar mean familiar things in investing offer give you this comfort feeling okay which may lead for you to have some emotional attachments and i i'll tell you how this works so there are some stocks okay in the stock market that you might be very familiar with and you've been investing for a very long period of time and that would make you take decisions from an emotional angle rather than a logical approach so if i am investing in a particular stock from a long period of time i know that this stock is good you know i've seen it over 3 or 4 years period and i'm investing it now now suddenly it drops 20% okay and usually according to my logic if it goes down by 20% it means i have to sell right now but what sometimes if it's an investing stock that you're investing from a very very long period of time and you're familiar with it you'll be like are no no this stock aisa bahut baar kiya hai pehle it's gone up gone down i know it'll go up but maybe it's not going to go up maybe it's fundamentally flawed and it's going to go down but because you're so familiar with this and it's like you're you know you've been in, investing in this from a very long period of time you take an emotional decision rather than a logical approach and when you take an emotional decision it becomes harder for you to sell out of that stock 
सो डोंट गेट ट्रैप्ड इन एनी डिक्लाइनिंग इन्वेस्टमेंट इफ समथिंग इज गोइंग डाउन जस्ट बिकॉज यू हैव इमोशंस फॉर दैट पर्टिकुलर स्टॉक दैट डोंट नो आर दिस ये अच्छा स्टॉक है दिस वेरी नाइस इट विल गो अप वन डे एंड यू नो बिकॉज और यू कैन यू नो आई हैव सीन सम पीपल सेइंग नहीं नहीं ये मेरा यू नो आई इन्वेस्टेड 10 इयर्स अगो वंस यू नो नाउ आई एम इन्वेस्टिंग अगेन इन द सेम स्टॉक डज नॉट मैटर डोंट लेट योर इमोशंस attach to the stock okay look at the stock as just a mathematical number saying that okay it is going up by 10 15% great it is making me money if it goes down have a stop loss and sell but don't look at it from an emotional angle and if you get emotional now you won't sell it that's the issue you'll be like nahi nahi jayega upar just nahi i know this will go up so never hesitate to abandon an investment even if it's your you know dearest uh, stock never hesitate to abandon an investment if it is not doing well if it is unattractive now another rule another axiom here is called intuition okay intuition is basically a hunch uh, you know andar se wo aata hai ki i you know i feel this I, i just have this feeling i just have this feeling that's an intuition now there's a lot of difference okay now you can have a hunch you can have an intuition that is great okay i have this feeling that the stock will go up you know i i just have this feeling it's good to have such a feeling but if you have such a hunch please the back it up with something don't just have a hunch and say acha mere ko hunch hai i have this intuition this will go up khareed lo don't do that i have this intuition but let me do more research about this i have a feeling this might go up but let me look at the data once more and see if my hunch or my intuition is even justified or not don't just say okay i have an intuition so i'm going to invest that is basically you're investing you have an intuition and you're investing with the hope that your intuition was right or you were playing with luck that the odds somehow tilt in your favor and it goes up the chances of you beating the stock market every time with intuition is very less rather intuition is good have an intuition but don't do it i mean do it with data like go see the data because what happens is sometimes when you have hunches or you have these intuitions you sometimes want a particular outcome like you want it to go up because you had this intuition you want it to go up, go up and sometimes it might go up and then it you know you might think that okay you know you're over confident that okay my intuition was awesome and it works really well but don't play too much into intuition there is a difference between intuition there's a difference between hope always do your data always look at data be logical about it and only then invest um very similar to this another the next axiom is called occult right occult basically means magical or supernatural powers and i've seen this a lot a lot of people in the stock market think that some magical or supernatural force will make their stock market stock prices go up and suddenly will make you rich if that was possible everyone would be rich and everyone would be praying to magical supernatural powers right now that's not how it works relying on some supernatural power to get you rich will actually make you poor the way you if you think starting like that now keep your magical superstitions so you know if you think about superstitions or any supernatural powers it's fine you know you can believe in it you can keep it aside but don't mix that with financials that's what i'm saying you want to believe in something believe in that but don't correlate that belief of supernatural and magical powers into the stock market and don't do a financial bet because of that always do a financial bet with numbers and logic and data and lot of research another important axiom axiom number 9 is optimism and pessimism now what is optimism optimism is a person who always expects the best or who's always looking at the best case scenario pessimist is a guy who always looks at the worst case scenario now you cannot be only optimist right you can't be an optimistic person all the time in the stock market because you start getting clouded judgment you can't be like i am only looking at best case scenario i'm investing in a particular stock and it has to go up 20% i'm not even looking at minus 20% as an option right that is a very weird combo you can you have to be a realist when you're investing in the stock market now what this book says is basically there's a difference between optimism which is expecting the best and having confidence means knowing how you'll do if the worst also comes so you have to be a little realistic that expect the best i'm not saying no but also have that confidence or this ability to handle the worst okay only then will you be having a balanced feet in the stock market blind optimism which a lot of people have that you know mera there's no chance only this can go down i know it'll go up maine research kiya this will never go down never understand that because you never can predict what will happen in the stock market tomorrow everything might point towards something going up but it might go down tomorrow you never know so a healthy sense of pessimism reminds you of the odds you're playing against okay that no 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 you know what i think 20 15% loss to ho sakta hai so that is how you're realistic in the stock market look at the best case scenario but do not ignore the worst case scenario so you have to be optimist and pessimist at the same time now now 
axiom 10 talks about something known as consensus consensus means majority opinion now what this book says is disregard the majority opinion it might probably be wrong now what this actually means is you know in the stock market we've seen a lot of experts we see a lot of gurus these bankers research firms forecasters everyone always come and say something about the future now there is two ways to look at this when when these people come and give gyan there are two ways to look at this one whatever they're saying is absolutely the truth and there is nothing but the truth and that is exactly what is going to happen okay that is little stupid but that is what some people believe that whatever these guys come and say ki this is the future i believe that the number one or the second way which is a tougher way but makes you a better investor is you start asking questions saying that why is he thinking like this you know start questioning it start examining it start verifying it start doing your own data behind it so don't when when the whole world is saying something is good don't just be like yes yes that is good don't do that when the whole world is saying something good you should be like hmm why these guys are saying it's good let me think about it why is this good okay maybe there's something to it let me go examine this a little bit more of course going against the crowd always is also wrong it's not right but what this basically this axiom says is listen to the majority sometimes they're right but not always sometimes they might be wrong but either which way it does not matter listen to them but you do your own research and figure out whether it's good or bad now another very important axiom axiom 11 is called stubbornness right ziddi and this happens to all of us it happened because you know you've heard this saying that at first you know keep uh, trying to succeed if you don't succeed try again try again try again until you succeed sadly that that does not hold good in the stock market because i'll tell you why it is a very nice thing but you're pouring lot of money also inside this right oh i may i failed once but i will try again money is going money is going again money is going again and why is it going because you're stubborn enough to realize that this is not going to work and let me leave it now let me give you a very nice example on this right and i've i've spoken about this in one of my previous episodes which is called averaging down now let me tell you first what averaging down is averaging down basically means that if i invested in a stock that is 100 rupees okay and suddenly the stock fell down to 50 rupees now if i buy it again at 50 average buy price of that particular stock from 100 becomes 75 so i've averaged down okay so when that happens i keep averaging down you know your stock price keeps going your buying price keeps going down from 100 it becomes 75 again the stock price from 50 went to 30 you might average more it might come down to 60 so you might think averaging down is a good option well averaging down is a good option if the stock is good if the stock is a bad stock and if you keep averaging down in a when in a very bad stock you keep averaging down averaging down that stock is just going downwards so what's the point of you averaging down so much so don't be stubborn understand when a instrument or understand when the stock is in loss and get out from it remember the one of the axioms which was don't live on hope if a ship is sinking jump and leave the last axiom axiom number 12 which i think is the most important axiom is called planning now i know for a fact that a lot of people plan their future and planning is good even i plan my future but sometimes you know we planning the future is good why because it gives you a sense of stability that okay i have planned for 5 5 years into the future and these are the things that might happen so i have planned for a few things but don't get too stuck up on those plans or don't always think that that plan is the way i have to live my life because sometimes what happens something so random comes in the middle of that plan that it might ruin the entire plan and that point don't feel bad about it because it's fine you know plans are made for you to stick by something but always understand that the plan can be spoiled by something new in the market so the same way it comes in the stock market i've seen a lot of people saying i will invest in this stock and keep it for 20 years now do you know what is going to happen to the company in the next 20 years can you predict no you can't predict what what can you do every 3 months you look at the stock's quarterly results and see if it's fundamentally good you keep a track on that industry to see if the government or some rules and regulations have not been changed so you always have to keep a constant track you can't say mai isme dal dunga i'll close my eyes and get up after 20 years and make a lot of money very few stocks can with utmost certainty even survive for 15 20 years you'll never know what will happen in the stock market so planning is good but don't over plan and even when you plan and it doesn't work out in your own favor um it's okay the future is not a guaranteed book it is not guaranteed with set of rules you no one can expect the future uh and don't think that few past ko dekh ke mai future ko predict karunga that also doesn't happen uh so plan look out for everything invest with a plan but always keep track and keep an eye out for everything that is changing around in the market
Okay, don't just say that this is the plan and I'm not going to sell it for 30 years. That would be stubbornness. Uh, don't hope for it to go good. That is also a bad way to look at it. You have to be flexible. Okay, this is working. Great. I've invested in this. Made my money. Next. Okay, I found another good stock. Might go up 20%. Let me invest in that. Asa karte jao. See how much you'll make, right? If you constantly keep investing in so many instruments and that's constantly going up, you'll end up making money, right? So that was the 12th axiom, which was planning. Okay, guys. So these were the 12 axioms from the book Zurich Axioms. And this basically spoke about the 12 things with respect to risk and rewards. What Max Gunther learned from his own experiences and his father's experiences when he was working in the Swiss bank corporation. Now, we have seen all these things. Now we need to choose which of these 12 axioms and we have to be honest with ourselves. We have to be true to ourselves and say, you know what, Shashank, I think Axiom 3, Axiom 4 applies to me. I have been a little bit on the fence because I keep hoping for things when it's not in my control. Maybe I've been too stubborn about some things. Maybe I get a little more emotional. Maybe I'm hoping too much. There will be something or the other that might be wrong in your trading style. And you can look at these axioms and maybe try to figure out what is that something that you can improve. Because it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to be bad. Right? But the only way is to understand what the flaws are in yourself so that you can become a better investor. And if you become a better investor, then you make more money in the long term and you end up, your, your chances of becoming rich is high. So don't be stubborn. Look at all the 12 rules. See if there's something, I'm not saying follow it to the T, but just see the rules, try to make sense of it and try to see how you can become a better investor for the future. Okay, so if you like this video, a uh, lot of research has been done on this book review as well. If you like this video, then please like, share, subscribe and comment below um, and give me your thoughts about how the market is. Give me your thoughts about how these videos are. Any feedback, as I said in this video as well, we are always supposed to be open for feedback and we will. it makes us become better. So again, if you like this, please click on the like because I love the likes uh, and share it as well. Okay, see you guys. Bye. Hey guys, so disclaimer time. All the rules that are mentioned in this video are not our own rules. It is the rules that we have derived from the book. So just keeping that informed that every rule that was mentioned in this video is from the book and not our own. Okay. Investment in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing. Please read the risk disclosure documents carefully before investing in equity shares, derivatives, mutual fund, and all other instruments traded on the stock exchanges.